one of the things that gets secreted that's not supposed to get secreted is vital protein. One uh, such protein is albu- albuminuria. Oh, did anybody albumin. want to intervene? Albumin. Yeah, albumin. Mm. Um, so, so a protein in the liver. Yep. It's there to not let uh, anything in the bloodstream leak. Yeah. You know, yeah. into yeah. other tissues. Yep. Um, well. Next slide. Okay. Um, well, I, I didn't really explain this well. Um, but I guess I'll uh, it keeps fluids in your bloodstream. Um, and if, uh, like it helps if if some tissues. It keeps fluids from in the blood instead of going to tissues that they're not supposed to go to. So it's really important. And it attracts sodium ions and other cat ions, um, which are really important. It makes up 80% of the plasma. Um, as, as you may know, um, uh, the blood is made mostly of plasma, and this albumin is the main part of the plasma. So you could say this albu- al- albumin protein is... Um, kind of the main component of the blood. Um, so, uh, substrate transport, it helps in substrate transport as well. So it's a really important protein. Um, uh, so as you can see, as you can read, um, albuminer- albuminaria um, is a sign of kidney disease and means that you have too much albumin in your urine. Um, al- so your kidney is not functioning properly if you are secreting albumin. Albumin is a protein found in the blood. We already covered this. A healthy kidney does, doesn't let albumin pass into the bloodstream. Um, so it's, it helps regulate the albumin that you secrete and make sure there's enough albumin, uh, that's the, enough albumin that your body needs. A damaged kidney lets some uh, albumin pass through the urine, but not a lot. The less albumin in your urine, the better. It means that your your kidney is functioning properly. Um, it's not letting too much albumin go away. Um, why is urine albumin important? Um, it measures the al- uh, measurement of of albumin, and it's an important tool because it well d- it tells you if you have kidney damage or not, and it's you can monitor the the Progress, progression of the kidney using this albumin. So it's, it's, it's a really good measurement of how well um, your kidney is functioning. Next slide. Um, how is it detected? Well, um, the, there is a urine test that you, that you, off, that you go yeah, through. They, they test your urine or albumin, how much albumin you uh, secrete. Yeah, you uh, you give them a sample. Uh, the patient gives a sample, and um, it they they just they see what's in your urine. Uh, you you will you will be asked to collect a urine sample in a special container in your health care provider's office or commercial facility. Um, yeah, so you go to the bathroom and produce a sample. <laughs> Um, and they send it to the lab for analysis of what exactly is in it and make sure that the amount of albumin um, in the in the urine is enough. Next slide. Okay. Um, how do they detect the, what you do? Um, they use a, a dipstick test performed on the urine. They take a small sample, they take a small sample and detect the, the presence of albumin, albumin in the urine. Um, the nurse or technician, technician places a, a, a dipstick, a stick of chemically treated paper into the urine. The dipstick changes color if albumin is present in the urine. Okay, so um, this chemically structured paper, um, they, if it reacts to albumin and changes color, this is the albumin. If it, if it reaches a certain color, that means there's too much albumin in the bloodstream. And another measurement is they, t- they measure the albumin and creatinine in um, the blood. A healthcare provider uses this measurement to determine the ratio between albumin and um, creatinine in the urine and to estimate the amount of albumin secreted in 24 hours. 
Um, creatinine is a waste product that is filtered in the kidneys and secreted in the urine. Healthcare providers consider uh, a urine a urine albumin to creatinine ratio above 30 milligrams slash grams higher than normal. Um, okay, so creatinine is pro. I'm not sure exactly um, what this is, but it seems like it's it's general waste material that's secreted through urine, um, and they make sure that for every amount of this type of waste, there is an amount of albumin. And if, if the ratio is not the normal, um, they will suspect that the kidney is uh, misfunctioning. Um, how can albumin be, re be reduced? Well, um, kidney failure. <laughs> That's a simple answer. Um, um, you may be able to reduce the amount of albumin in your urine by taking medicines that lower blood pressure. Um, as as we know that um, hypertension, high blood pressure is the main cause is one of the main causes of kidney damage. So if you reduce blood pressure, there your kidneys might actually function properly and make sure that everything's all right. You may also be able to protect your kidneys and reduce albuminuria by working with a registered dietitian who can help you plan meals and change your eating habits so again we go against changing having a healthier lifestyle um, a lot of these blood disorders are caused by un, either genetics or an unhealthy lifestyle if you have a healthy lifestyle the, the risk dramatically decreases um, you can avoid uh, lose weight if it's if you uh, a patient needs to lose weight if they're overweight um, avoid avoid foods and and so with high sodium, high levels of sodium or salt, um, and with, uh, eat the right amounts of protein that you need. Uh, yes. You ahead. probably answered this, but uh, uh, what what does a kidney do? It like filters um, b b blood, so it takes out the urine uh, waste. I mean, right? To urinate. Yeah, yeah, it filters yeah, out the blood. And, sure. Yeah. Um, they, let me, I guess, let's make this clear. Um, you, your blood is the main transport system of the of your body, and um, any waste that you, that your body wants to get rid of, it sends to the kidneys, and your kidneys filter out what it doesn't need, and secretes it through urine. And anything that does that it does need, it keeps it in the bloodstream. Um, Albumin is something that you need in the blood. It's not waste. And if there's kidney damage and it, and your kidney doesn't filter out, um, the uh, albumin gets lost and you end up with certain complications. I have a question. Go ahead. So waste are sent to the kidney through blood as well? Waste? Yeah, well, waste is sent to the kidney. Through blood? Um, through blood, yeah. The, your blood is the transport system of your body. Um, is that clear? Yes, yes. Thank you. All right. Any other questions before we continue? All right, we're good. Um, protein, proteinuria um, is increased levels of protein in the urine. Um, we talked about specifically albumin, um, but this is... Um, Proteins in general that are in your blood. This condition can be a sign of kidney damage. Uh, protein, which helps build muscle and bones, regulate amounts of flu blood, uh, combat infections, and repair tissue, should remain in the blood. If protein inter enters the urine, they ultimately leave the body, which is which isn't healthy. Um, I think we all know the importance of pro uh, the importance of protein in your body. Um, it's really important for muscle build for your muscles and bones your body runs through protein most of the time so um it's really important to have enough protein if the kidney, there's damage in the kidney and you secrete a lot of protein that's really bad um uh, oh yeah, tell me when to stop because I, I can't see the number of the slide um how yeah, does i'll start right. i'll start okay um how does protein get into urine Protein gets into the urine if the kidneys aren't working properly. We said this. Um, normally, glomeruli, which are types of loops of capillaries, blood vessels, 
and the kidneys filter waste products and excess water from the blood. This is we know this. Um, if if glomeruli um, fast these substances, but no long no but not larger proteins than blood cells into the urine. If smaller proteins sneak through the glomeruli um, tube, glomeruli are the tubules in the, in the kidney. Um, recapture those proteins and keep them in the body. However, the However, if these tubules are damaged, um, there is a, pro a problem with the reabsorption process of the protein. And if there is an excess protein load, the protein will fall into the urine. Um, so basically, if there is damage into the this glomeruli, which is a specific um, blood vessel in the kidney, and there, there's a problem with the filtering unit of the protein specifically, um, if there's an excess load of protein in the blood, it will get secreted and um, your body won't get the protein that it needs. Is that clear? Because it might be a bit complicated. I feel like I'm saying a lot of things that probably doesn't make sense. All right, all good? Okay, um, next slide. Oh, I'm a sauce. <laughs> uh, how common is this, um, this typical um, condition? Um, well, normal amounts of protein in the urine are less than 150 milligrams a day. Um, high levels of protein in the urine are associated to the rapid decline in kidney function. It affects about 6.7% of the United States population. Uh, so what, what's the United States population? How, how many million? I don't know. But I think that's a lot. <laughs> um, how much? 300 million, like over, the, over 300 million. Over 300 million, so that's... Yeah, it's around 370 in, million. 370 million. So 6% would be about... Uh, okay, this is not important time. I'll skip this. I don't even know how to do math. My head touch. My head touch. My head touch. Okay. Camera. <laughs> Camera on. Uh, so... Proteinuria is either caused by non-cancerous or temporary medical medical condition, including dehydration, inflammation, and hypertension, intense excessive or activity, uh, emotional stress, aspirin therapy, which is a medication to reduce pain, fever, or inflammation, and exposure to cold can trigger proteinuria. Also, a kidney stone in the urinary tract can cause proteinuria. Uh, proteinuria is an early indication of chronic kidney disease, which we talked about. It is a gradual loss of kidney that may require dialysis, which is a treatment that filters and purifies the blood using a machine or a kidney transplant. Also, as we talked about, diabetes and hypertension are the major causes of kidney disease. Other kidney harming diseases and medical conditions that lead to proteinuria include immune disorders, acute inflammation of the kidney, uh, cancer of plasma cells, intravascular hemolysis, which is the destruction of uh, red blood cells and the release of hemoglobin in the bloodstream, uh, cardiovascular disease, which includes stroke and heart disease, uh, preeclampsia, which is the simultaneous development of high blood pressure and proteinuria in pregnant women, poisoning, trauma, kidney cancer, congestive heart failure. And most serious illness can result in proteinuria. Symptoms doesn't start at the beginning of proteinuria, but it's a bit advanced uh, over time. Symptoms may include more frequent urination, shortness of breath, nausea and vomiting, swelling in the face, belly, feet and ankles, lack of appetite, muscle cramping at night, which happens if you hold your leg for a pretty long period of time, uh, puffiness around the eyes, especially in the morning, which is a swollen appearance, foamy or bubbly urine. Anyone experiencing these diseases, especially foamy urine and swelling, should see a doctor immediately. And by the way, foamy urine is when your urine stream more forcefully and faster. Proteinuria is diagnosed through a urine test. The patient provides a urine sample and gets examined in a lab. Uh, the doctor uses a thin plastic tip stick with chemicals on the tip. 
with too much of any substance is in the urine, the chemical tip changes color. The rest of the urine is later investigated under a microscope. Uh, doctors look for substances that don't belong in urine, such as red blood cells and white blood cells, bacteria and crystals that can grow and develop into kidney, kidney stones. A doctor will test the urine for three times in a period of three months. If the samples test positive for proteins each time, the patient likely has a kidney disease. The earlier the diagnosis, the more likely to slow the disease and stop it from progressing. Additional tests might include a blood tests to measure the levels of chemical waste products. Healthy kidneys move these substances through urine, but if the kidney doesn't work properly, creatinine or chemical waste products remain in the blood. A blood test to estimate the glomerulus filtration rate, the GFR. Uh, the GFR tells the doctor whether the kidneys are working properly or not. It also helps the doctor to plan treatment. Blood test to measure all proteins in the serum. The serum is part of the blood filled with proteins. It helps in the transportation of fatty acids and thyroid hormones, which act on most of the cells found in the body. Imaging tests like CT scans and ultrasounds. These tests show images of the kidneys to, to know if there are problems with, within the kidneys or not, such as kidney stones, tumors, which are the massive tissue that's formed by an accumulation of abnormal cells and the obstruction of the urinary tract. Urine protein electrophoresis, electrophoresis, doctors search for specific proteins in the urine sample, for example, a protein that causes cancer in the plasma cells. Immune fixation blood test, this test finds proteins called immunoglobulins, this, these are antibodies that fight infection in the blood. Too many of them cause blood cancer. And a kidney biopsy. This is a procedure involving the removal of a tiny piece of kidney to be examined by the doctor under a microscope to determine what caused the kidney disease. Treatments depend largely on the condition of proteinuria. Each condition has a different treatment. If kidney disease is confirmed, a treatment include medications, diet changes, weight loss, and exercise. Diabetes and high blood pressure with proteinuria may need blood pressure medications. And those with diabetes need to control their blood sugar. Diabetes patients should receive GFR tests every year and may get some help from nephrologists. And nephrologists is one specialized for kidneys. Pregnant women have a serious condition and should test urine annually and make some blood pressure checks. This serious condition called preeclampsia. It's a pregnancy complication characterized by high blood pressure and sense of damage to another organ system, most often in the liver and the kidneys. If protein reagent accompanies with other diseases, blood pressure medication still might be useful to prevent kidney damage. Blood pressure and urine should be tested every six months to make sure kidney disease is present. Those with mild proteinuria does not require treatment. Proteinuria cannot be prevented, but it can be controlled and treated. And here's the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention.